friend, this is the last Tuesday I will be with you guys this year on Digga Tuesdays and on Connectra Society. I'm very happy that I get to share with you all my nutrition insights as well as cooking demos. I had so much fun cooking in my kitchen. So thanks for um coming in this Tuesday. You can always watch this again. It's recorded on YouTube as well as Facebook and uh, feel free to ask me questions afterwards as well as um, right now on the comments. So once again, we're going to start off with a um, uh, presentation. So here we are. And today's topic is about cancer and nutrition. And it's something that is very interesting and it's got a lot of uh, responses since I put it up. So thanks for joining me today. I'm Renee and I'm a registered dietitian as well as a culinary um, professional. So I teach um, people how to cook healthy as well as um, have a food line behind me called True Nosh. So check myself out on the website on truenosh.com and give me some feedback. And I'd love to see you because this weekend and every other weekend, every weekend after until the 20th, I'm going to be uh, opening up a pop-up shop in um, uh, for the weekends. And that will be from Saturday and Sunday from 11 to 5 on 7th and Granville in Vancouver. So cancer, why we're talking about cancer? Well, it's really, really prevalent, especially in North America. And it is shown in last year's statistics, nearly one and two Canadians develop cancer in their lifetimes. And one in four will actually die from um, complications of the cancer. So I'm not trying to be grave here, but it is a very, very interesting subject and we're faced with it every day. In 2019, an estimated of 220,000 Canadians have been diagnosed with cancer. And out of that, 82,000 will die. Mo mainly the cancer types are lung, breast cancer, colorectal, prostate, and there are a lot of other types of cancers, but they're not as prevalent as these main ones, um, but which is about 48% of last year's stats. So what can we do? Well, things that we can do to help decrease our chances of it getting cancer is things to avoid that damage our body. So we talked about this again in the um, session that I talked about how to keep your skin um, energized and how to brighten up your collagen and how to um, not have the aging effects affect you so quickly. Well, it's similar here. Eating less sugar and refined carbohydrates is something that we can do to decrease the um, way that we can damage our body. Getting too much sunshine also can help uh, avoid and decrease your chances of getting cancer as well as smoking because smoking can impair wound healing and also damage other um, things in your body that causes diseases like cancer. Nutrition is super important, right? Um, so we can prevent it by packing our diet with other foods that such as um, foods with different colors. So I always tell you to eat fruit, foods and vegetables with a lot of different colors because they have antioxidants, they have healthy fats and oils, they have a lot of water in them, also essential nutrients that our body really likes. And when your body likes it, it will become happier and healthier. Okay, so whole fruits and vegetables, whole grains I've talked about because they have all the vitamin Bs as well as essential fatty acids and fiber, right? So that can prevent cancer with a balanced diet of lean protein and healthy fats. We talked about protein and fats previously. I urge you to review my previous sessions with you guys and try to de decrease your eating, your, your food intake of uh, processed meat, so I'm talking about sausages and bacon and ham, and try to decrease also refined carbs, so I'm talking about the cakes and pastries and chocolate bars, 
that are high in sugar and refined carbohydrates, right? Salt and alcohol could also increase your chances of getting cancer. But in reality, there's no diet that is proven to cure cancer, but mostly you wanna to try to lower your risk by increasing all the whole fruits and vegetables and fiber and whole grains, lean protein and fats that I talked about. I'm gonna keep going back to this um, balanced diet because it's super important for us to really adhere to this diet to prevent other chronic diseases, right? So for antioxidants, you wanna up your fruits and vegetables that have a darker color. The darker and more vibrant the colors, the more antioxidants, flavonols, flavonoids that you have um, in order to have the stronger antioxidants to keep your body healthy and healthy, okay? Research has shown poor diet, okay? Poor diet and not doing any physical activities. So I'm talking about your sitting, on the couch or in front of the computer all day without going out for a walk or doing chores. And you're going to, you know, eat a diet of um, potato chips or fries or burgers that can increase your risk of getting cancer, okay? Because the cancer drains your body of energy. So you feel very tired and you don't have that stamina throughout the day. So it's also very important to stay active and not let you know the, the poor diet and inactivity drain your body of energy. Prevention is key. All I have to say is you really have to take care of your body, staying healthy, keeping a healthy weight throughout your life. I'll talk about that later. Um, you can quit smoking if you're a smoker. Um, also, a physical activity on a regular basis. I'm talking about like, 15 minutes a day, and if you can do every other day, 30 minutes, and then one hour, um, like every two days, if you can put that in, right? Any physical activity is great. So doing chores, you know, cleaning the bathroom, cleaning the kitchen, or going into your garden and planting and replanting and raking the driveway. Those are really things that you can do at your home to increase your physical activity, right? And then healthy eating also across ages and try to limit your alcohol um, ingestion too, okay? So the evidence is strong because, you know, it estimates that at least 18% of all cancers in the U.S. is related to the amount of body fat that you have and the amount of um, inactivity that someone is not it's not doing any activity, that's that's something that you need to keep in mind. Alcohol consumption, poor nutrition. So this can all be prevented. So why aren't you doing this for yourself to prevent chronic diseases such as cancer? A balanced diet, what that means is you wanna focus on some quality protein, okay? It should be about 10 to 30% of your daily calories. Or if you want to, um, calculate it with amount of your own weight. Usually a regular person who is not an athlete or not a bodybuilder needs only 0.8 grams per a kilogram of your body weight. So you want to uh, know how much you weigh in kilograms and then times it by 0.8 and that's how much protein that you need to have in a day. We talked about what is good sources of protein, so lean meats and some poultry. Fish is also great. Beans and lentils and nuts and seeds, right? Healthy fats, so omega-3s. We have salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines. Those are fatty fish that are really high in these omega-3 fatty acids. And if you are plant-based, so you want to look for things that have omega-3, such as flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, and even walnuts. And having whole grains because the undersperm is in still intact. So brown rice, quinoa, you want to add um, um, a nutrition of the endosperm in it, meaning all the vitamin Bs are intact. And vitamin Bs have uh, include thymine, niacin, riboflavin, pentothenic acid. So a lot of the grains that are stripped of their outer layer don't have the vitamin Bs or fiber. So you want to cut out white rice, white flour. You want to choose the whole grains in the brown bread that have grains that you can see 
okay? And fiber is really important because it helps you slow down your digestion and absorption of carbs, meaning you'll have the energy that you need throughout the day dispersed and not have really big spikes and really low spikes of low glucose in your bloodstream. And fiber also feeds your gut flora, so it actually helps um, your healthy microbiome flourish, as well as producing some essential fatty acids. And it helps you release rate waste, so it helps the waste from your body and you can discrete it easily if you eat more fiber in your foods. And with fiber, you need to think of fluids and you always wanna choose water if you can, because water is something that really hydrates your body, keeps you from you know, uh, storing a waste in your body, as well as keeping you happy and healthy, right? If you feel like dehydration, is something that you need to be worried about just put water bottles all over the room or in the house to remind yourself to drink water you can also download an app that can remind you to drink water okay and when you drink water before and after meals that can also help you remember to drink water your weight so what we said previously 18 percent of cancer can be prevent most cancer can be prevented because you can make sure that you are maintaining a healthy weight. Being overweight or obese increase certain kinds of cancer, especially in women, um, as well as other cancers such as colon cancer, re rectal cancer, and esophageal cancer and pancreas cancer, liver and kidneys are also things that can be affected if you're overweight, okay? So one main way is you can actually easily check is your body mass index. And some people um, don't know how to calculate this, so I actually, oh, it's not BMO, it's BMI, unfortunately, I had a typo there. But you can see that it is your kilogram divided for, by your height in meters squared, okay? And those of you who don't know how to do that, you can actually Google a BMI calculator and you can input how much you weigh and how much your, your how, how tall you are and it will spit out a number which is usually if you are in a normal healthy weight should be between 20 to 25. So if you're creeping up over 25 you need to be more mindful of your diet adding more physical activity into your lifestyle right. So what things you can do you can think of portion sizes so if you're eating a two cups of rice you might want to slowly decrease half cup at a time so choose a cup and a half next week. And then if you can do that, try one cup the following week. It's about taking baby steps to get to where you need to be, okay? And you wanna cut out foods that have super high in calories and added sugars. So want to read your labels consistently, knowing what ingredients are in your food and how much sugars and sodium and fats that you're ingesting is super important too. So read your labels. There is a session in a, a few months ago that I talked about reading labels and ingredients. So go back and review those. And then high calorie foods and drinks. So I'm talking about your soda pop. Um, you know, if you really can't decrease your your soda ball consumption, add a little bit of water and lemon just to dilute it and then slowly cut that out of your life. I'm not talking about telling you to cut it out right away, but it's a practice of decreasing the amounts one by one, one day at a time. Physical activity, super important, keeping your body in check, trying to add in um, some walks throughout the week. Also, you can, you know, maybe um, walk around in your house. If you have the benefit of having like a, um, a, site, a bicycle or a elliptical machine in your house, use it, right? Also, nowadays a lot of people are staying home, so maybe you can shop for some weights or even just like heavier water bottles. And I can actually lift canned foods, so canned beans is fine if you don't have weights. So try to see if you're watching TV, just lift those canned beans. That's something that you can do really cheaply, right? Try to 
improve your mental and physical health because they are both correlated. So physical health can lead to a happier, healthy life and also can lead to a leaner body mass and increase your bone density because with the muscles wrapping around your bones, it will decrease your chances of getting other things like osteoporosis. Um, muscles help protect against obesity, therefore protect you against cancer. Muscles also promote insulin sensitivity, therefore decreasing your chances of getting diabetes and can promote circulation. We need circulation to bring oxygen to your cells and to bring waste to your lungs or your kidneys so we can just excrete them in your urine, okay? And then can help you manage stress as well. So why not exercise? Because it is something that really adds so much positivity and so much excitement to your life. You really want to consider that, okay? And doing something that you like is also important too. And maybe having a accountability buddy that can help you get to your goals more easily. I do wanna talk about cooking temperatures and when you're cooking meats, especially at home, there are two chemicals that actually are produced when you're cooking meats, especially in higher heat settings. So if you read the slide, especially in high temperatures over 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can reach those temperatures by grilling on a barbecue or high temperature frying, okay? And this is, um, important only in meats because there are two chemicals. I talked about the HCAs, which is the heterocyclic amines, and the um, PHAs, okay? So these are things that you need to know when you're cooking meat. Try not to blast up your barbecue. Try not to bring the frying pan to the highest heat possible because these two chemicals are known to actually cause other diseases and can disrupt your body's function and can lead to cancer. If you um, look closely here, well done meat. So things that you put on at high temperatures for longer periods of time are your smoking foods for higher um, amount of times than usual these actually, these chemicals are formed and they're more, they're found in more of a significant amount the longer you'd cook them something, okay? Um, be mindful, you can always steam things, you can always pan sear quickly at a medium temperature and stir frying things also below three degrees is very important too, okay? So during treatment, I do wanna talk about this because a lot of people um, have been diagnosed with cancer and need to understand what they need to focus on during treatment as well as during recovery because it is interestingly um, that you might be uh, true, that you might get um, re-diagnosed with cancer if you don't follow a healthy and balanced diet with increased physical activity. So those who are during, doing treatment right now are in recovery mode, you still wanna avoid processed meats, red meats, foods that are super salty or super sugary or super oily. Um, alcohol should definitely be limited or even um, cut out in your life. Baked meats because they've been in the oven for a longer period of time and high temperature. Deep fried foods, especially because they have the trans fats and also high temperature cooking. And you also don't know what type of oils they've been using or how long the oils have been in the deep fryer for. Grilled foods, they're really high temperature also and charred foods, okay? And then there's things that have high preservatives in the ingredients such as pickles and canned foods. You wanna look at the ingredients before you buy the food so you know exactly what you're consuming, okay? And then those who are under treatment may have a lower immune system. Therefore, you want to always consume things that are cooked right and as well as um, foods that have been pasteurized because you know that your immune system is down and you might not be able to fight off any of the pathogens that are in the food that if they're not cooked perfectly right um, during treatment some people may affect their taste 
their smell and appetite. And this is dangerous because it can cause malnutrition for you to lose weight and lose um, appetite and not eating can cause a lot of risk because you're losing weight and you're weak and you're tired and you not be able to fight off the cancer treatment and that can actually worsen your cancer and increase your cancer growth and spread. Some common side effects of treatment is um, a loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, having dry mouth, mouths that have uh, sores in your inside or in your throat, changing the way something tastes and if you can't swallow you can't eat and therefore you can't be nourished and feeling full after eating a small amount is also a common thing too constipation and diarrhea so some things you want to keep in mind is you want to always have more protein in your diet because you need more protein to make yourself stronger and help you understand that um, protein also reveals your cells that you are uh, shedding away when you're in chemotherapy or radiation therapy, right? Sorry, I'm just going to exit here and close this off so this doesn't uh, disturb us. Okay, so adding extra proteins can just be some beans or fortified milk that have a higher protein. You can buy some protein supplements that don't have the extra sugar or calories, it's just strict protein. You can increase your fish and yogurt and eggs in your, in your meals. Um, and you wanna in, eat the proteins first during the treatment and recovery because that's when your appetite is strongest. And you can sip liquids in between your bites during meals if you have dry mouth. And even making milkshakes or smoothies that have some protein fortified um, powder in it can help too, too. So if you have um, nausea and vomiting and, and taste changes, only eat the foods that smell good. So you want to understand which foods smell good to you and you want to increase that in your diet and maybe add supplementation inside that food, right? Trying new recipes is always fun. So I'm going to share with you a fun soup recipe later, as well as some sauteed um, uh, beans also. And you can blend drinks with high nutrients. So check with your doctor and registered dietitian to see what things that you can blend and to increase your nutrients in your shakes. And I talked about that earlier, some protein, some beans, some nutrition supplementation, um, as well as you know yogurt and avocado, those are higher in nutrients. Eating small meals and healthy snacks throughout the day can actually help you ingest more calories. Larger meals when you are feeling well rested and, and feel well are important. And then the largest meal is when you should eat when you're feeling the hungriest, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, because you don't know when your appetite will change again. Um, you can always store amounts, uh, small amounts of your favorite foods around that you're ready to eat when you're hungry. Because some people who are in treatment or recovery have um, different bouts of hunger and also thirst. So you always want to make sure that the foods are around you and are easy to get when you feel thirst or hunger. Okay, try to be as active as possible and read books that may be able to help you and, and watch comedy and talk to people that um, care about you and give you a positive outlook in life and that might increase your appetite. And also brushing your teeth and rinsing your mouth to relieve symptoms and aftertaste and can also help people with taste changes. So caution, you want to be mindful when you're preparing your food, right? You always want to make sure that you're not spreading the disease around your body by eating things that are um, uh, questionable, right? So cooking meat products all the way through property is very important. Try to find a thermometer that can help you read. So meats that are cooked should be over 165 Fahrenheit interior. And then also when you're cooking things property, you avoid problems with bacteria or fungal that can grow inside. And, and also when you ingest that, that can be harmful to your body. So only trust people that prepare your meals. 
um, especially those who are preparing your meals for treat after treatment. And be mindful of raw and, and unprocessed meats and dairy. So the softer the cheese, try to stay away from it. The harder the cheese is, the better. And um, cooking your vegetables all the way through, cooking your meats all the way through is very important and will decrease your risk of developing food poisoning. Um, these are some tips uh, to help people who are suffering from nausea and vomiting, and that's a very common side effect after chemotherapy and radiation therapy. And this, these slides will be available on Kinetra Society's website after. You can always replay this um, when you get a chance. I know there's a lot of points in there. So make sure you can take a screenshot or something. And these are some tips that you can use to decrease your nausea and vomiting or help you alleviate these symptoms. And some things I wanna highlight right here is like slowly sipping your liquids throughout the day. So have a cup next to your bed or in, in all around the house can be very important. Um, so things that can ease your stomach is like toast, plain yogurt, or some clear broth. And that's, um, something that can ease your stomach when you're feeling the need to vomit. Always let your vomiting, you know, subside first before trying to ingest anything because, you know, that can also help you decrease your chances of vomiting that food up and, you know, can save some of your esophagus because you're um, vomiting a lot of acid and can be harmful to your esophagus also. Um, try to eat in a room that has less cooking odors and that's kept warm because you want to feel comfortable when you're eating. And when you're eating, try to sit up or raise the head of your bed and, you know, keep it raised after one or two hours after you're eating. That can help your food go down easier and wear clothes that are relaxed, loose and comfortable also is good. And knowing which foods trigger your nausea and vomiting is important. So you can also keep a record of those foods and make sure the people that are taking care of you, your good ones, and when you're going out shopping for your own food, you want to stay away from those foods, okay? And then if it doesn't subside, talk to your doctor and see if he or she can give you some anti-nausea medicine. Taste changes are a major change that some people can go through after chemotherapy or radiation therapy. Um, so you can help people with um, taste changes by eating foods that may be more pungent. So adding more spices and sauces to the foods, marinate foods beforehand so their flavors are enhanced. Um, eat meats with something sweet, so cranberry sauce or jelly can help you, as well, also applesauce, okay? And try such like tart food and drinks like cranberry juice or lemon juice with a little bit of uh, sparkling water. Um, and maybe some drops, and a lot of times you can go into the pharmacy and buy like sugar-free lemon drops or gums and mint that can actually wash away some of the metallic and bitter taste in your mouth. Um, and then a lot of people may suffer from uh, weird metallic tastes if they eat with metal spoons. So you can um, buy like some biodegradable utensils or plastic utensils that can help you decrease the taste changes when you eat with metal utensils, right? And try to eat your favorite foods when you have the appetite and chew longer, allowing more contact with your taste buds. Keeping foods and drinks covered, drink through a straw can help eliminate some of the odors. And I also said like cleaning your mouth and having regular dentist checkups is very important as well. Some people who are suffering from sore throat and have trouble swallowing, um, have mouth sores or continual weight loss can benefit from nutritional support. So some people are afraid, oh, like nutrition support, you know, that means that someone is going uh, and is not benefiting from the cancer treatment, but it might not be true. It can also just mean like they have really painful uh, symptoms when they're swallowing or eating because they have sores in their mouth and sores in their throat. And when you are suffering from that as well as weight loss, the, 
the dietitian or the doctor may request you to go on nutritional support um, because you need that calories and, and you need the nutrition to help you recover from treatment. Um, obviously, the best way to eat is by mouth, whenever possible. That's always something that you should get uh, nutrition through your mouth first. But then some people just might not have enough capacity or are too weak to eat as much to supplement their diet. So therefore, um, someone who is suffering from all those symptoms may be eligible and may require nutritional support. And there's two different nutrition supports. One is through the veins and one is through a feeding tube inserted to your stomach or your intestines. And they both um, will give you extra nutrition and supplementation. And that will be a order coming down from your doctor and the dietitian will help um, your, your friend or family member or yourself go through what's needed for you to understand the nutrition support that you are being given, okay? So, so people also may take supplements and you want to be mindful when you're buying supplements to help you uh, fight off diseases or help prevention. And you always want to know that the Food and Drug Administration does not uh, play a hand in approving the safety and effectiveness of most supplements. So you want to be mindful, okay? And you want to confirm the safety of these supplements by going to the Natural Medicines Comprehensive Database. Choosing your health. This is one side that I always go and share with you guys and make sure that you understand what you need to do in order to improve your health, improve your mental health, as well as your physical health and increase your happiness in your life. You wanna be disease free, you wanna have a lot of energy and you want to spend your days feeling great, right? So quit smoking if you're a smoker, go to your pharmacist, ask what things that they can do and give you to help you start off your healthy track of quitting smoking. Increasing physical activity. I talked about walking around your house, taking stairs when you're going to your work. You might want to park further away when you're going to the mall and just walk that distance. And you can also lift cans and bottles at your house. You don't actually have to go and buy weights. Um, keeping a healthy weight is important. We talked about um, how to calculate your BMI today because keeping a healthy weight is going to definitely decrease your chances of getting cancer. Having a healthy diet, we talked about lean proteins, healthy essential fats, we also talked about fiber, and eating lots of fruits and vegetables that can help you increase your antioxidants um, and fiber and also help you understand that there's so many different fruits and vegetables that you've never eat before and try to educate yourself with the different types of fruits and vegetables that are available now at the grocery stores. Staying hydrated, you always want to choose water first. And if you don't have water, then you can try to see if there's herbal teas um, and decaffeinated ones that are better for your health. And then, you know, if you can't do that, then go for some sparkling water and, and with a little bit of um, lemon juice or pomegranate juice that can also help with some tastes uh, that will help it taste better, right? Stress, stress I can't urge you enough is one thing that you need to manage because they can significantly impact your blood pressure and therefore causing a lot of different diseases after your blood pressure increases, right? So stress, you can also manage through like a, taking a yoga class or medication class, um, taking up some gardening, spending time in nature or talking to a good friend or watching some comedy can help you decrease your stress as well. And stretching in your home, you know, just put on a video if you can find on YouTube that can have some stretching exercises that you can follow easily through the screen. It's really helpful for you to understand that stress can lead to a lot of chronic diseases. And if you don't treat stress well, 
you can also increase your, your chance of getting cancer. Remember, maintaining your health is more important than just focusing on one particular thing. So focusing on one thing will not help you. It's more about understanding that you're balancing your overall lifestyle that can really make a big difference to your health. Remember to read your labels. Something that has a really big fat, low fat sign in front doesn't mean it's exactly healthy. It can have a lot of refined carbohydrates and sugar and sodium and really high in calories. So you wanna learn how to read the ingredients as well as the nutrition label. And consult your doctor whenever you need a clarification, get um, onto HealthLink BC or call 811 to speak to a physician or a dietitian or a nurse. Prevention is always the key. You don't want to end up being in the hospital and regretting all the things that you've done to get yourself there. You want to be able to be excited about life. And if that's something that you need help with, you can always go to bcdietitians.ca and request to talk to a dietitian in your area. And we're always here to help and answer questions. Okay, so there is my presentation for today. And I'm going to go back to my kitchen and share with you um, a few recipes that we, um, or that I have with, um, Excitement. Okay, so here's my kitchen, and today I actually want to share with you a healthy soup and also a, a quick stir fry that you can eat with your stew as well. So let me see if you can see my table here. So I have here, I don't know if you guys know what this is, it is a parsnip. Okay, so parsnips are easy to find, they're usually in the um, uh, grocery store next to the carrots and the celery and a lot of people don't know how to cook parsnips and they are super flavorful and I love to make a parsnip soup with some coconut milk and some sauteed onions and garlic with it. So I'm gonna um, show you what I have in the back here also. So I cut the parsnips into chunks and I put about two liters of water onto boil and the parsnips are on boil for about 30 minutes now. Um, so then they become very, very tender. So what you wanna do is cut off the top and I'm actually gonna keep the skin on because it's got a lot of fiber as well as antioxidants in the skin. If you know um, and if you follow me in the last few sessions I talked about why you should keep the skin on because that's where the plant has the most antioxidants and fiber because they can't run and get away from their predators or the natural environment and therefore the only protective layer they have is their skin to ward off any uh, rain, snow or, or pests that can eat them. Okay. So what you want to do is clean it really well with a vegetable scrub and you want to cut them into small pebble sizes or the size of your thumb. And you're going to throw it into a, um, so each um, parsnip is about uh, a cup and a half worth of parsnips right here and you want to put it in um, two cups, two and a half cups of water. So double the amount of water and put them onto boil until you can pierce through the parsnip like you're cooking some mashed potatoes, okay? And then after you put that onto boil, you can forget about it for about 20 minutes. And what you want to do is get your coconut milk, if you have some, um, stir it around because the fat tends to go to the top. And you want to just saute some onion. So I have a small onion here. And I'm going to cut this onion into small <coughs> slices. So what I've done um, to help myself um, from not crying is I cut the top off of the onion. I kept 
the um, routon. And what I'm going to do is actually just cut the onion into like a flour almost to help actually um, the juice is not exposed to the air, so I won't be inhaling a lot of the onion smell, so it will decrease your chances of crying when you're cooking an onion. And once you cook it, the usual, once you cut it like this, like a flower, the peel comes off pretty easily, and you can like either rip it off entirely, or you can peel it back all the way where the root is, and you can cut off the root once all the skin has been peeled back, and you'll find miraculously, also your onions have also been cut into slices quite easily. Okay, so now I've cut off the top, right, with all the skin, and now that I realize all the onions have been chopped up really nicely. So I'm going to turn on my um, cast iron pan here. And I have a little bit of cooking oil that I'm going to add on to the bottom, about one teaspoon worth. And we're just going to saute the onions nicely. in the pan with some um, oil, okay? So the pan is about on a medium heat and after the onions turn a little translucent, I'm going to add some garlic. So I, I always add garlic later because garlic doesn't have that much water in it, therefore it can burn a little bit easier. So you don't want to burn the garlic, you always want to add the garlic a little later after the onions have been cooked because garlic cooks a lot faster. Okay, so I'm going to add about four cloves of garlic into the frying pan and you're going to mush each garlic with a knife to help you release the skin and it peels a lot easier once it's smushed. I don't know if you guys can see me over here. And I also have some snow snap peas as well as a um, red, uh, some red pepper. Okay, let's see how that, it's a little bit of darkness here. I can, cut off. I can hear the onion sizzle behind me. That's a good sign. I love the smell of onions when they're on the pot. Okay, so I'm just going to rough chop the garlic It doesn't have to be cut too tiny. Okay, four cloves of garlic in here. And then I'm ready to stir my onions around. And once you see the onions getting caramelized, a little bit, and they're all translucent, you can add the garlic in. It help break up some of the onions. And this parsnip soup is wonderful um, during the fall because it adds a really nice heartiness to any meal. So now I've added the garlic and I'm just going to stir it around in the pan. And if you like a little bit of spice, you can always add a sprinkle of paprika or cayenne pepper to your onions and garlic 
I'm just gonna add a small sprinkle on there. And I'm gonna bring you guys closer to my saute pan so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so you see the garlic and onions with a little paprika. And now I'm sauteing it a little bit. And now I'm going to check out my parsnips. And this garlic and onions is actually going to be added into the soup also. Once the garlic and onions have been nicely browned and cooked, I'm just going to pour it directly into the soup stock. And this will add a lot of flavor into the soup. Okay. I'm gonna check out my parsnips and see if they are cooked. So I have a knife here that I'm just gonna pierce through one of the parsnips and it goes through very easily. That means it's all cooked. And what I wanna do right now is to add in the onions and garlic that we've just cooked into the parsnip and the water. So this is just water. You can use chicken stock or vegetable stock if you want. Okay, so I'm gonna let that boil for a little bit. And on the same stove over here, we're gonna saute some snap peas. And I have some uh, red peppers here also that I'm gonna saute. And we're gonna use some of my own creations of sauces that I make at Shrinosh. So those of you who don't know, I have a food line and we have a no added sugar hoisin sauce with black garlic and apples and sweet potatoes. And I also have an XO sauce that is all vegan as well. So we're gonna make a really nice saute with some um, red peppers and some snow peas as well. So what I'm gonna do is just take out some of the uh, tips off of the snow peas. They don't need to entirely be taken out because we wanna keep the fiber on these guys. I've washed these already and they look pretty nice. So you just wanna make sure that there are no um, dirt and other things on here. And then I'm gonna cut my red pepper. So I have a, like half of a red pepper. I'm gonna use it all up. There are really big pieces of red pepper around, so I can't always seem to use the whole thing. And I bought some of these um, nice food savers and you can wrap them and reuse them. So just be more eco-friendly and sustainable to our planet so I don't have to use any plastic wrap, okay? So you see already the snow peas and the peppers are really beautiful already. Um, I have my pan with a little bit of oil that I have in the bottom here. And I have some scallions that I've regrown with the stump of the scallion that I have and I'm gonna use those in my saute pan as well. So what I'm gonna do is to put the snackies and the red peppers into my pan already. This is already in a medium 
It's the same pan as the pan that I used to saute the onions and garlic. Okay, I'm going to turn that lower because these don't need a lot of time to saute. And again, I'm going to add some cloves of garlic. So I have three cloves of garlic that I peeled. And you can see that I like to add the garlic last because I don't want it to burn. And I can hear the circling of the vegetables really, really nicely. All right, some garlic always adds a lot of aroma to your dish. Again, I'm just going to rough chop my garlic. And then I'm going to add it into the saute pan with the and then you just turn it off because the cast iron pan retains a lot of heat. So the garlic will cook in the residual heat. And then after I turn off the pan, I'm going to add some of my hoisin sauce. I have an open one here. Um, you're just going to pour in about one tablespoon worth of hoisin sauce. And I also have an open XOXO sauce, which I use um, bay lilies and wood ear mushrooms. I have a lot of garlic and onions and some nutritional yeast and peppers in it. And then I'm just going to add it to the pan. And we're going to saute it. So I'll bring you guys closer to my pot again. And now that I've added my XO XO sauce and my hoisin sauce in here, oops, I'm going to saute it all around. And this will be a beautiful side dish to my soup. And as you can see, the heat is turned off, but the cast iron pan is still retaining its heat. And this is a beautiful dish to serve up with this parsnip soup. The parsnip soup is also already done, almost done. I'm going to add a cup of coconut milk into the soup. And if you guys remember, also I love to use some nutritional yeast. This is some nutritional yeast with a lot of vitamin B12s in it. And I'm going to add about two tablespoons worth of that into the soup. We're going to blend the soup with a handheld blender. And we're going to serve it up. You can add a little bit of your spice if you want. So I have a nice handheld blender here. Or you can put the entire soup in a blender. Once everything is blended, you can serve it up and add a little bit of our sauteed veggies on top or serve it as a side dish. And you'll have a wonderful lunch. Let me just finish this. Are there any questions with the attendees or on Facebook that I need to address, Adam? Thank you. 
Okay, now you can see that the soup has gotten quite smooth. And I'm gonna take the handheld blender out. And it's ready to serve. So I have a bowl here. I'm gonna grab a ladle. See how nice and hearty that soup is. Wonderful. Turn it off. And if you like, you can serve it a little bit of your saute on top with a little bit of the red and green peeking through there. Be a nice garnish. And that is all for today. Is there any questions that I can answer? Um, you can always email me at infotrunash.com. Hello?